I made a huge Omori iceberg chart. And I'll be analyzing every single entry on this list, one by one, as we'll slowly descend to the bottom of the iceberg to find the most interesting and unknown secrets hidden in this game. Spoiler alert. The tip of the iceberg. The other world. The Hikikomori route. The game has two main paths which you can take. Either go outside and touch grass, or stay inside to be a Hikikomori. On the morning of day one, come up to the front door and choose to ignore Scale's obsessive knocking. This will allow you to interact with Sunny's bed again, having him take a nap. Doing so will lock you into your house, where you will complete all the tedious chores left before moving out, essentially replacing all day content by mundane tasks. However, this route expands itself in its dream world, where some cutscenes are slightly altered, with a whole new night of events with many bosses and quests at the end of the game. Omori has several different endings. There are three main choices you must pick as a player which will determine your fate. They are in order of appearance, opening the door for Kel, saving Basil after finding out the truth, and finally whether you want to continue after losing to Omori. From there, these three choices branch out into various endings you can see, as displayed by the chart on screen. In the end, you either get the bad ending, where either Sunny or Basil dies, or confess to the truth to everyone to get the good ending. And for those who watered Basil's plants in the dream world every day while he was gone, you will receive a secret cutscene at the end, showing their somethings disappearing. You've probably already heard of the track that plays when Sunny jumps off Bowen's song My Time. However, did you know that he specifically composed two more tracks for this game? Have a listen to these bangers. Discord plays Omori is exactly what its name says. A whole server of people are free to make inputs to play the game by simply typing commands in the chat. This is comparable to watching a toddler play due to the chaotic amount of people doing inputs at the same time, but it definitely has its funny moments from the problems these people face when trying to coordinate. So far, there have been two playthroughs which have been archived and uploaded on YouTube. Check them out if you have some free time. And I mean a lot of free time, because they are over a hundred hours long each. In the game, there are three encounters with Sunny's phobias, which can be fought in both routes as a scripted boss. The Hikikomori route will have you fight them with your headspace party, unlike Sunny being alone in the normal fight. Increasing the music speed that plays during these fights makes it a fully fleshed out track. Have a listen. There's a total of 13 CDs you can collect from side quests in the real world. They are remixes of the soundtrack by various artists, including Toby Fox himself in his Mary CD, which was produced one year before the release of Undertale. Headspace is Sunny's imagination, and many things in the real world manifest themselves similarly in his mind. This includes Captain Space Boy from the cardboard cutout, Humphrey from the book you can find, and the Hikikomori route, the underwater highway based on his blackjack game on his computer, and so on and so forth. There are many more, but experiencing the game for yourself is perhaps the easiest way to find them. Oh, this reminds me, what sort of stuff did Sunny see for this to show up in his dreams? You know what I mean? Like, not so sure about that one. Dude, I want to jerk off! Omori is currently being re released on the Nintendo Switch, coming out on the 17th of June 2022. There has also been new unreleased content found, which I am unsure will be exclusive to the Switch or not. These include surprise of fights against your party members, presumably to be included as a tutorial overall. Just look at Mari's defeated state though, makes you wonder what that's all about. In 2018, OmoCat released a demo to its Kickstarter backers. You can find it online nowadays and play through it, 
having about three hours worth of content. The demo would end after you defeat Captain Space Boyfriend, so you're not missing out on a lot. But compared to the release version we got, there are many noticeable changes in these two years from graphics and sound to story. One interesting detail I found was that the game's story introduced us to Basil through his grandma at his house, which said she was worried about him and that Basil went off to take a train somewhere, unlike in the current game where we are properly introduced to Basil before he disappears. Once Amoria and friends stand in a huge line without a ticket to the train, they decide they have nothing better to do than to go to the other world and from there it's what you would expect. In general, more of the stuff has been moved around to various places and expanded into bigger areas. Moreover, aside from all the graphical and sound changes, this version had many more random encounters than NPCs. When upon interacting with something or someone, they might just start a fight with you. We finally made it out of the other world, but I really miss my flowers at home. If there's playing some little stress when you shower them. Come on, they're really cute. Yeah, sure. That sounds like fun. Let's go. Did you want to show us your iceberg now, Basil? Ah, okay, but it's nothing amazing. Oh, Basil, stop doubting yourself. I'm sure it'll be great. You're right, Aubrey. Sorry, I'll try to believe in myself more. There, this way we can all see. Layer 2. The Vast Forest. According to a picture of the game from 2014, Kel's name was originally Kelsey. Also, apparently Calm Down might have been used for headspace segments. This picture is from a very early stage of development, but now at least you know his full name. On the topic of Kel, he has one of the biggest single target damage potentials of any of the other party members. The community refers to this strategy as Kel Nuke, and for good reason. The strategy is simple. At its core, utilizing his skill unlocked at level 9, Run and Gun, which bases damage inflicted on enemies by his speed stat rather than damage. The true potential of this skill is unlocked with any speed increasing abilities and items, which will have him absolutely erase anything standing in his way in a single turn. Here's a list of some of the things that are useful for this strategy. If you're struggling with a boss, definitely give this one a try. Orange Joe is a mixture of orange juice and coffee, and it's Kel's favorite drink. Maybe this iceberg should just be about Kel at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Apparently, it's supposed to taste bad. You be the judge of that one. There's five title screens in the game. The classic white space title screen for almost the entire game where Omori stares into your soul. The eerie black space title screen. One day left title screen featuring a glitching Omori and Sunny showing the fight for control with a red space background. The good end title screen when Sunny defeats Omori. The bad ending title screen when Sunny dies. Background sound effects indicate Omori's victory of proving Sunny's worthlessness, as in life is normal with or without him. Scary stuff. The Recycletist Headquarters is a dungeon in the real life segment of the game that has a lot of specific prerequisites for it to be opened on one day left. Sunny's imaginations and his party go to fight some enemies and solve some puzzles in such a huge recycling compartment. There's not much content in it, but at least you can see all of the unique real life tags. If you missed it and wish to experience it for yourself, you can find a save on the internet, which you can download and overwrite one of yours to explore the Recycletist Headquarters. If anything, this is more of a reward for exploring the real life segment for all of the days thoroughly. There is a chance you encountered this headspace mirror jump scare on your playthrough. Everybody's face gets distorted and that's about it. You'll know in advance if you got it, if the background is that of the vast forest. Sweetheart is a donut, as indicated by this poster which you can find in the Orange Oasis. It is implied that this donut house is where Sweetheart was raised before moving on into the castle. Black Space 2 is the large expansion to Black Space. The place where Omori's repressed memories go. Honestly, this entry alone could merit a whole video of its own. 
which is how large it is. In comparison, it's much weirder and isn't as easily accessible as Black Space 1. To fully unlock Black Space 2, you must be on the Hikikomori route and do the following on the last remaining night. Run to the deeper well to collect all of the three different pieces of sheet music and bring them to the lost library which can now be accessed with your entire party. In there, defeat all of the fears to receive some new skills and unlock Black Space 2. Return to White Space and interact with Omori's computer to be warped there. The design is similar to that of Black Space 1, except now all the doors have new areas behind, with 5 new complete areas behind each door. If you have time, you should definitely explore it by yourself, as it is the easiest way to uncover many of its secrets and hidden gems and lore. I will, however, be talking about some of the interesting areas of Black Space 2 later in this iceberg chart. In Black Space 1, there's a developer room in the town area. Interacting with all of the graveyards will grant an achievement. Hmm. That's strange. An entry must have been loose. Huh? What is this? Did I make this entry? Something about it seems... So familiar. No, that can't be. Mori, she's. In the final sequence of normal route, Sunny recollects the memories and rearranges the photos just like in Basil's Headspace album. However, there is a description for each of the pictures which explains many things. Point is, these are blurred out in the normal game, so you can't see them. But you can see them in the game files. You see the tears falling from his tired eyes as he looks ahead. You suddenly realize that none of this is a dream, all of this is real. As you and Basil step into the house, you look back towards the trees and see it. The light engulfs it as it sways in the wind. For a moment, you feel at peace. You hate yourself for feeling this way. Is that all of it? Is everything going to be okay now? Suddenly, Basil stops. You look up at his eyes, but this time, they're wide awake, staring at something. You turn your eyes towards it as well, though you wish you didn't. An eye meets yours. Your heart sinks into your stomach. You shouldn't have looked back. You just shouldn't have looked. Welcome to the underground. We're gradually starting to get deeper into the iceberg, so expect some weird, obscure stuff as we move on. Delta Rune I've already mentioned that Homocat and Toby Fox have made stuff for each other in their games. The new Chapter 2 release for Delta Rune has an Amori reference in one of Susie's lines. Yeah, crazy stuff, I know, whatever. Also, the late motif from Mary CD from the tip of the iceberg is used in one of the tracks. Headspace is a loop. Think about this one in simple terms. The main villain of the story is Omori, and he tries his hardest to conceal the truth. Sunny created Omori as a self-defense mechanism, but Omori became too powerful for Sunny's good. This alter ego now stops at nothing to hide all painful memories from him by going on the longest adventures possible. All these bosses and quests are all but a distraction, yet this world isn't perfect because the truth does come out at one point or another. And who else brings Omori to the truth other than Basil and Mari themselves, as they guide him to the place where she fears most, Black Space. But Sunny has been stuck indoors for the past four years, and Omori and his imaginary world have done a great job at hiding the truth, by resetting headspace whenever he comes too close to remembering anything. This is hinted at multiple times throughout the game, mostly whenever you see the skeletons of your dead friends who too were reset when Sunny came cl close to discovering something, or towards the deepest parts of the game where these things manifest themselves more often due to their proximity to black space. The bosses are by far the biggest distractions for Amori to forget about Basil and everything else. The last layer of defense before black space is Humphrey the Whale at the bottom of the well. 
Not only does his dialogue hint at this idea of looping headspace forever, but also symbolically, with his never-ending attacks of swallowing everyone until they die just like they already have previously as indicated by the rotting skeletons. Will you be doomed to repeat this cycle over and over? Or will you break it? Not many know this, but when you complete the neutral ending of the game where Sunny moves out, a new text file in your game folder appears, called for Sunny, or whatever your in-game name is. There is something behind you, it says. I guess you can't escape the guilt even outside the game now. Morse code. There's a Morse code that plays in two places which you can find either in Black Space 2 or the real life segment. Decoding it reads a bunch of mumbo jumble about recycling. For some reason Sunny is really into recycling. The version played by the jukebox in Black Space 2 has some weird remixes and even Sunny's violin part playing at the end. Basil's cutscene. When jumping down in one of the holes after finding a key for the Hangman game, you will be presented with a choice of playing either the Omori or the Basil tape. Nothing interesting about the Omori tape, but Basil's tape has been shortened, removing the first segment showing Mari lying dead on the floor at his step. This was probably cut because it would reveal too much information too early, and only to some because you can only watch one of the recordings before being teleported back. Perhaps it would also be misleading players to believe Basil was the murderer. You are not my son. In another one of the holes you can jump after retrieving a key or through Black Space 2 access is an area depicting Sunny's father chopping the tree on which Marie was hanged. His shadowy figure says, stay away, you are not my son. Why? Why won't you fall? It's unclear whether the first line was imagined by Sunny, but if it was, then comes the discussion on whether his parents knew of the truth behind the incident. Perhaps they just wished to protect Sunny from harm's way. Be free to make your own theories about that. Unused content. Omori has been in development since 2014, and there's a lot of content that's unused or that has been scrapped, so much so that it would be impossible to cover it all here. The century will primarily focus on enemies. In Far Away Town, you are supposed to be able to fight dogs and crows at night. They have drawn sprites, but for one reason or another, it didn't make it to their release. Also, most fights were supposed to use the emotion system. Basically, there's sprites for different emotions for each enemy which are unused. There is also a fight against a baby sp spider, presumably after defeating something in the walls. In the release, you can simply squash it by walking over it after the fight. In Headspace, the long-legged cat from Firefly Forest was supposed to be a foe. It's just a teleport back to the start now. Also, all of the sprites for the slime girls have been made separate, but have been combined into a trio in the game. If this sort of stuff interests you, then consider checking out this channel. They even made a whole documentation of an Omori version released in 2019, which had many changes and things still in development. Girls Bathroom On the Hikikomori route, you can receive a mystery potion by completing one of the slime girl's quests on the last night. This will grant you the mystery potion which transforms the Mori into a girl underwater, giving his sprite long hair. You can also enter the woman's restroom with Aubrey now. The track C in your fantasy samples the bop sound from the toad. Pretty cool fact not many know about. Also, here's the original sample for the something sound. Speedrunning. Omori speedrunning is a very niche part of the community. The most popular category for speedrunners is glitched any percent, mostly played on versions 1.0.6, with the current record standing at 2 hours 33 minutes and 26 seconds. The fastest way so far to do one of these is to go on the Hikikomori route and to skip all the day content. The run ends when you wake up and stab Sunny. Oh, and also there's even a category for the 2018 demo version for anyone interested in that. Either way, let's explore some of the interesting speedrunning details, starting with the rotten milk. Prior to version 1.0.6, you could use a bug that allowed you to use items you weren't supposed to on enemies. This is achieved by first logging an ability which can be afflicted on an enemy 
such as Omori's sad poem, and then canceling your turn and coming back to instead choose another item. So basically you can heal enemies with your items or you can apply toys that were intended for your party onto enemies. You see, Rotten Milk is special because it deals a flat 50% damage in health, essentially one-shotting a boss in one turn with two Rotten Mills used by two different party members. For speedrunners, this means you could accelerate the last bosses to cut time, which is why the version 1.0.6 is the most popular thus far. Also, fun fact, Omoris did not succumb state, allowing him to sustain a lethal blow before losing was bugged too, because the game would perform the check on whether it was used at the end of a turn, and not just whenever it was used. This made fights much easier because you could have a party member heal him indefinitely by restoring his do not succumb state. Another strategy used by speedrunners to their advantage is tag skipping. By mashing the tag button and moving at the same time, you can get past triggers for certain cutscenes, not only saving time but also resources when skipping some bosses such as the King Crawler, the WTF value. Moving away from speedrunning for a moment, I ought to teach you all about the WTF value. For any Undertale junkies, this is basically the same as the fun value. Some events will be modified for whatever value your run, your run gets assigned, making each run slightly unique. These are assigned from a number of 1 to 13. The changes aren't anything drastic, but some of the coolest ones are the small junkyard jump scare when interacting with a photo of someone familiar, and the widely known Humphrey line, I fucking love air conditioning. The train end. It has been confirmed by Omocat that this is the canon ending for the game, and so Omori and his friends took the train and found Basil. What a touching story. We're past the center mark now and the lost library, the place where memories are stored forever. Will you face them head on, or will you scribble them out? Get ready for some really weird stuff as we go down. Starting off strong, we have body pillows, sweetheart body pillows, and also perfect heart from the last day of the Hikikomori route body pillows. Yes, this is not a joke. They were sold on Valentine's Day and apparently they sold out too fast. This fandom really scares me sometimes. Well, on a side note, you can also obtain a body pillow in-game as a weapon for Aubrey in Sweetheart's castle by sleeping in her bed. Moving on. In Omori's 2017 trailer, you can see him using his afraid state, which he never uses in the current game. Omori is always immune to these effects, even applying them to Sunny in the last fight. Also, you probably know how Omori is the only party member who has three stages of emotions, but did you know that the afraid state was too supposed to be of three stages, going from afraid to panic, which is unused in the game, to stressed out? Hero's emotions. When researching for this video, I came across some interesting information. Apparently, ever since version 1.0.7, Hero's healing is increased if he has an emotional advantage over a party member, or decreased if he's at a disadvantage. This may be useful in some situations because it would require a setup where one party member is always either neutral or at a disadvantage. Really niche tip, but if it ever helps you then, good on me for telling you. Observe. More on combat, the observe skill messes with the AI somehow, all the while costing a total of zero juice. You can obtain observe very early in the game, by stargazing in the playground. Abby's eye charm from the Hikikomori route, which you can obtain by not sparing her in the abyss will do the same job. The skill is simple. Predict who the enemy will target on the next attack by using the skill or by having the charm equipped. But the skill works in a very weird way by forcing the foe to decide its turn earlier than it should. The enemy doesn't always have all of its skills registered in the list of attacks it can perform when being observed. This makes some fights much easier if you use the skill to your advantage. Most notably, in the Sweetheart fight, it will prevent her completely from taunting your party which not only does damage to everyone, but turns everybody angry. But an even crazier strategy is on the most challenging boss in the game, Perfect Heart, whose phase 2 transition where she heals herself back to full health can be observed to be completely prevented entirely, giving you a victory because her health at the end of the turn is zero. 
White Surf Style 6. The in-game version of this track which plays in the snow biome is looped in a completely different way compared to the official soundtrack. I just had to include this one because nobody seems to mention this anywhere at all. Black Space Warps. There are plenty of alternative entrances to Black Space for you to find in the game. Some are less obvious than others. Most of the entrances unlock either after defeating Humphrey or on the last night of the Hikikomori route. However, some of these warps require you to equip the Universal Remote Charm obtained from the TV quest in the other world. By doing so, some of the TVs will serve as teleports to various Black Space locations. Otherwise, there's also a bunch of others that I haven't mentioned scattered around the world for you to find, so be on the lookout. Red Maze In Black Space 2, one of the most obscure places you can get to is the Red Maze. It's located at the docks where you must walk off the main path into the void to enter it. Once there, you will be in a huge maze with some more stuff. You can interact with a toast which will make you start losing health, and spawn Hail Marys which will scream loudly if you touch them. In the middle, there is a big ladder which you can go down. Halfway through, you will meet Daddy Longlegs, the same stranger who reminded Sunny about the truth in the Firefly Forest. This time, he will tell you to turn back while you still can, but if you don't, then you get to see this monstrosity. Mari's Home is by far the least well-known place of black space. The only way to access it is by either taking a warp to the docks in the black space area with something following you, or by getting access to it through a mixed hikikomori route, where you give up on opening the door for Kel on day 2. If going by the normal route, the screen will constantly become grayed out and full of static as if indicating that you're not supposed to be here, making it hard to explore. However, once in, you can see a creepy recreation of Sunny's house where all his real life friends are here. They say that Mari is acting weird and by going to check in on her, you either get a jump scare or get access to more black space depending on your choice of opening the door for her or not. This room and red maze are by far the most obscure places in all of Homori, so congratulations Congratulations if you found them out on your own. The oldest, the wisest, and the favorite. When interacting with the branch coral inside the deep well, you get to hear some interesting details about the lore of this game. The coral describes that before Headspace was created, Sunny had three creatures which all now reside in this world. The first is the oldest, being Humphrey the whale, losing all his conscience and evolving into a parasite within himself. He's grown too powerful, able to defeat Omori each time to be able to reset his headspace to continue the cycle. The second is the wisest creature, that being Abby, the one whose tentacles spoke out from the ground in various places of headspace. The coral tells you that she committed an act that opposed the dreamer's will, supposedly bringing out the truth. As all that do so, Omori erases and banishes the black space, the place where you can find her in the Hikikomori route. As a result, she was stripped of her wisdom and banished to isolation, a special prison somewhere deep, deep down. And lastly, the favorite creature is the big yellow cat who watches over the neighbor's room, the most important and calm place for Omori next to white space. All of these creatures have been inspired by some variant from the real life, the large cat being from the playground, Humphrey from a book, meanwhile, Abby being a bit of a mystery. But more on that later. Welcome to Black Space. Omori Boy. Omori was originally designed as a comic. It started off in 2012, so in 10 years you can expect a lot to have changed. The first ever drawing of Omori Boy had the caption, I'm Omori, and I fab and play old games. 2012 Omori was an absolute giga chat living the life. He'd spend time with hot babes on his computer and his cat, didn't shower, would jerk off all the time to his waifu, didn't have to pay rent because he lived in a blog, and would constantly have depressive thoughts. You should check them out if you have some time, they're really interesting. Under the game files, there is a short 12 second clip. The clip starts with the text in memory of a day, with a very scratchy like font. Once it fades out, it cuts to a small animation of Omori sitting in a room, on a single bed alongside another double bed and even a fridge. The end. 
before quickly rolling the credits. Omori. Uh, well, after looking about this some more on the internet, I found that it's just a reference to a show. Henry. Back in Omori's development a long time ago, Hiro was originally named Henry. Scary. Also, fun fact, Basil went through a bunch of changes in character development. Omocat said that his personality was split in two, giving half to Omari after he got reworked to be the Basil we know now. 3DS plus PS Vita Omori was originally supposed to be released on the 3DS and the PS Vita, as stated by the Kickstarter. Despite the monetary goal being met, it doesn't look like we'll be getting them at all. Just goes to show how long the development of this game took. Male Aubrey and Female Omori In early development, Omocat envisioned players could pick the gender of Sunny, which would alternate Aubrey's. There are some drawings of both, and as previously mentioned, you can use the mystery potion to turn Omori into a girl for a while. But they scrapped that idea because it would take them too much time to draw everything and re-gender the dialogue. Roboheart. From first appearance, Roboheart might seem to only be spamming random letters and numbers, but when decoded from base 64, she has some dialogue. You can see them on screen. So, yes, in the battle with her in the Hikikomori route, you just have no pity for her because you don't understand her. Nice. Inko. Inko was an in game character scrapped somewhere in 2014. However, there are remainings of a picture of her, as well as a whole theme track. It's unclear what sort of role she had in the story, as her mask and black and white appearance suggests she was a headspace character. More interestingly, when listening to her theme, we hear a calm, slow piano playing and a lot of static. You can make your own theories about that. Speaking of unused content, there is a lot of music from old times. They're all one simple Google search away, but most of them are just remixes, yet one stands out from the crowd and it's the track Evil. As its name implies, it's no good, especially for your ears, because it's just all the tracks combined into one. Here is a small sample if you're curious. In the black space sketchbook, you can find this abomination of a portrait. When looking in the game files, it's referred to as face cluster, and when zooming in, it is in fact all portraits in at once. Also, there's this thing which I included in the iceberg named nowyouknow.png, where Sunny has his eyes wide open, presumably after finding out the truth. 99 letters. Originally, black space was supposed to be a linear progression from one area to another, unlike in the release where you have to reset to the main hub every time you collect a key to another door. What's interesting is that 7 of the original black space rooms from development have not been deleted but made inaccessible. You must collect 99 hangman letters to unlock it, which is impossible. Some of these rooms evolved to what we have today, such as the one where Basil gets beat up by his friends, the early treehouse area and a corrupt version of the memory lane. But there's more. In fact, I've came across this reddit post which explained how black space was originally going to play out in the beta. The start would have your party struggle to enter the black space door, which would unlock after you've collected the hangman letters, only to agree to leave Omori go in a Alone. From there, the 99 letter sequence of areas and much more would play out as Omori would repeatedly kill Basil every time he mentions the truth. Finally, once at the exit of Black Space, the cutscene would play out differently on your route than the normal route. Basil would try to mention the truth one last time, only for you to personally interact and stab him. Or otherwise, on the Hikikomori route, Basil would conveniently forget everything and walk out the door to greet everyone waiting. From there, Basil would take a photo of everyone at the same spot at the start of the game, but this time everything would go well without a fight and the party would go see Mari at the picnic. But what if I told you there's yet another scrap sequence of introduction to black space? Yes, you heard me right, there's more. This one is really interesting. Marie would come to the neighbor's room when everyone was playing cards to talk to them about a haunted house south of the playground. She tells everyone to go have a look before joining the party. As you would approach it through a long corrupt forest, Omari's friends would slowly disappear one by one, all but Marie. At this point, the cutscene would get really weird. Marie gets a reality check and tries to stop Omori from jumping into the hole in Basil's house, which is black space. Then, Omori would try to stab himself to go back to white space to forget about all of this nonsense, but his model would start glitching with Sunny's, until finally, Sunny takes control of headspace as it becomes glitched out and you would finally be able to jump into the hole. Well, on a side note, while this whole event was scrapped, Mori still makes a notice of a haunted house in the game if you talk to her at the picnic near the end of the game. the ab
abyss. Now we're at the bottom of the iceberg. The most obscure and interesting entries reside here. Let's get right into it. Tag voice lines. In the Omori 2018 demo, there are unused voice lines for when you would tag a party member. Have a listen. Hi. Yuck. Hey. Can you even imagine if they did a voiceover for the entire game? That'd be pretty cool. Taco, Uni, and Meido. These three names are scrapped characters from Omori development's past. You can still find them in the game through some specific warps on the Hikikomori route in Black Space 1, but they don't have any interactions aside from just vanishing when interacted with. Let's go through them one by one. Taco-chan is a tentacled girl with a question mark on her face, whose appearance suggests that she might have been an early version of the Abbey we know today. In one of Omori Boy's blog posts, you can see her stop Omori from doing self-harm. And in another, we see Omori drawing her. The way I see it is that the original Omori boy had some sort of love story involved, where Taco with her question mark figure would be Omori's idealized love which he hasn't met yet. The second is Yuni, who is most likely an early version of the somethings Omori sees. You were supposed to be able to fight them, just like any others. When looking at some very old enemy drafts, we see that his name was an empty friend, and right next to him, a broken clock. You can make your own theories about that. The last character is Meido, whose appearance is very similar to Sweetheart. However, her black and white appearance makes it seem as if she's a stranger in hate space. Anyhow, in the current game, the inspiration for Sweetheart Heart is that one annoying lady from the candy store. These three characters mostly evolved into different things in the current game, but their appearance dates back to the very first trailer in 2014. You can notice them for a very brief moment during the town of Salem part, where they come out at night. Hero Massage. This entry is not talking about the massage skill for Hero, but rather about this huge sprite list that Omocat tweeted out in 2019. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but I want you to look at this thing. It's a bunch of sprites of Hero doing a massage to Sweetheart for some reason. Hmm. Speaking of unused sprites, there's also Basil and his grandma watering plants, and whatever this abomination of Mule is. Mule Theories. Mule is Mary's cat, and one of the only essentials for a more worthy of staying in white space. Thus, having this importance of the cat in mind, what's the significance of that one room in black space that everyone knows about? You're given the choice to cut open Mule for what reason? Perhaps it's just to shock the player knowing that they didn't have to do so, as it would seem like the only option when trying to progress through the area. In the real life segment, Mule is nowhere to be seen, but there are some leftovers from old Omori where he would serve as a guide to the truth in some scenes, but in the game he most likely just passed. Except when you think about this for a second, Perhaps this punishment room was Sunny's imagination of euthanasia. Even more interestingly, in the Hikikomori route, the last night's white space has Mule present or not, depending on the choice you made in black space. A contradiction to the notion that headspace has been reset and sent into a new loop. Another element connected to Mule is the butler, which you can see in Sunny's sketchbook and in that one black space room. It's also a bit of a mystery from where the inspiration for this came from and what his purpose is. Omocat's past. So, Omocat has been around on the internet for a while now, doing all sorts of art, and back in the day there have been some controversies. They're not anything interesting, but I thought I'd mention them here since it's about the game's developer. Here's some pics of whatever this thing is, and on one of the images I had to look up what the word Shara means. Basically, it's CP or cheese pizza. Uh, Omocat tried to sell that shirt to the public, which caused some backlash, which he refuted, but either way, that's pretty much it. Nothing else to it. Is it weird? Yeah. Is Omori going to get cancelled for this now? Maybe sometime in the future. Who knows? Moving on. 2014 demo. You can find on YouTube a video dating from 2014 showing early gameplay. You can also see Yuni, the empty friend character previously discussed. That's really the only footage we have, but there are some interesting things to look into. First of all, Omori got a water. Secondly, there are many tracks left over from the 2014 demo, and judging by the gameplay, the atmosphere was a lot more childish compared to what we have today. The tracks that would play were much more calmer and cute. If you're interested in seeing more of the really early Omori stuff, then head over to the Kickstarter's update page to see a bunch of interesting things. Placeholder end. 
On the last day, there is placeholder text left over telling of the events that occurred during the final parts of the game. If you were to originally abandon Basil, you would be woken up by a gunshot, where upon entering his room, blood splatter would be in a form of something, and you get the cutscene, not your problem. Everything else is like what we have now, except for the final good end scene where Sonny would confess the truth to his friends. There was a portrait made for him when he'd speak for the first time in a regular text box. But what's crazier, if you were to get the bad ending of giving up, there's cut out text which you can see on screen of all Headspace friends calling out Omori for one last adventure. Crazy stuff. Cake. In the first build of 2014 Omori, Omori traveled around and ate different nice cakes. Yay. You can also see a cake in the 2014 trailer, being burned by candle wax and then eaten. Perhaps it's symbolic of time passing and Omori's childish desire to stay a kid and not worry about anything. 143. These numbers are symbolic of a message, one that's often mentioned which you most likely haven't noticed in the game. It stands for I love you, I for 1, love for 4, and you for 3. Firstly, the WTF value previously mentioned is attributed to the 143rd variable, which is not a coincidence. Then, there's a bunch of fights with phobias where they would deal exactly 143 damage when the attack was scripted to be lethal. Also, one room in black space where you can get something to join your party or he will say Sunny, I love you. And finally, you can see on the screen that the Nintendo pre-order promo has the same message when Marie becomes corrupted for one frame. Sunny's house background, the last entry of this iceberg, is about the audio playing in Sunny's house. What exactly is it? And where does it come from? The audio of the voice is so muffled and distant and it's hard to make out any lyrics from the track. I have a feeling that it may be reversed, but it's still very hard to figure out anything from this. Perhaps it's not a song, but just child banner. I don't know. If you know, then please tell me. A flower crown, it has been preserved by the cold. Thank goodness you're here, Amori. I thought I was gonna be stuck here forever. I can't believe you came to save me. I missed you so much. You tried to calm down, but your lungs fought to breathe. Sunny, all these times I reached out to you, why didn't you answer? You tried to focus, but nausea overwhelmed to you. You promised me that we'd face this together, but you, you left me all alone. You tried to persist, but you couldn't hold steady. You gathered all your courage and learned to subscribe. Amori? Amori, wake up! There's light coming from the ceiling. Do you think it's a way out? Amori, you're so heavy. Come on, up the stairs you go. Amori? <sighs> Thank goodness you're awake. Are you hurt at all? I was trying to pull you towards this white light at the top of the staircase. It's really nice and warm feeling from it. Let's go up together.
safe with me. We can rest now, Mommy. All our friends are here. We got a pizza here. Oh, for sure. Hey, pizza here. Oh, hold on. Let me get the money. That's all good. All right, here you go, man. Thanks. Thank you.